Hello? Yeah, 大家能听到吗 ？Can anyone hear us? Okay, hi, nice meeting you guys. Okay, this is June and this is Dr. Emily. Emily. Yeah. 啊、uh, ，大家好，欢迎大家来到每周五的下午的五点半。呃、uh, ，consulting 君老师的时间，我是君老师。那么今天呢，我请到的是 UCLA 的这个 career counselor。那么他是专门负责这种啊、uh, consulting 学生的这种专业职业啊。Uh, 那么他和我一起，然后我们会今天给大家分析一下，讲一讲呃、uh, 为什么 career design and career consulting is so important. Okay, welcome Emily.、Okay. All right. So you know, like right now, we have a lot of students and parents as a question, something like, "Oh, what kind of major is hot,、mm -hmm. and、uh, what kind of major can help guarantee my kids to get a good job?、Uh, what kind of major is popular, or what kind of major can you know max my my kids' potential?" And well, we have those question. And usually we will ask like the kids like what do you want, right?、Mm -hmm. And most of answer is like I don't know what I want.、Yeah. Okay, all right. So that's why、uh, when you mentioned about like a career counseling and、mm -hmm. also career design, yeah,、uh, I'm so interested in you know strongly recommended to our students、mm -hmm. about the career design. So could you please introduce a little bit about what is called a career design? Okay. Um, so basically, with career design, the students will take an assessment、um, that helps determine what their personality is.、Um, so that kind of helps them figure out like what they really like,、um, don't like, how they work best, and how they think and process information.、Um, so based off of that,、um, on their career, their personality, they'll get recommendations for types of jobs that best fit the way they work.、Um, so students who kind of look at how they work. Um, it'll make them more successful for that career. So, you, like you play to your strengths. So the students, if they like focus on what makes them stronger,、uh, then that helps them think about the jobs that they're gonna do, and they'll be more successful in their jobs. And then from there, we can help them think about what majors would help them with that particular job. Okay. Oh、uh, well, the thing is, like this is like something really serious, right? It's、mm -hmm. a serious test. Okay. So according to the test, we can find like what is the strength. Yes. What is the weak point,、mm -hmm. and、uh, what direction they might be interested? Okay, but we also know like a lot of kids they're like rebel, you know,、mm -hmm. the teenager. So is that possible? Like they just try to trick the test and then, you know, answer the question in the totally opposite way.、Um, the test has been used for quite a number of years by lots of different businesses.、Um, so it's been around, I think, I don't remember. But like over fifty years, so many businesses have used、um, the Myers Briggs. So it's kind of hard to trick. And then also the first meeting after they take the test, they're going to meet with me, and then we're going to discuss and talk through the results just to make sure that that's the personality or you know that the results is what matches them. So we're going to go through and discuss the results in specific to make sure that the students agree with the results before moving on to the career side. OK， 呃、uh, ，那么刚才我们介绍了一下这个职业测试或者叫职业分析的这样的一个呃特点。那么 Emily 老师说到了，就是说在这个整个的这个测试当中呢，我们会去找到学生的性格特点，那么他的喜好方向，那么他的职业方向，通过这样的一些测试，其实这个测试是一个非常大的一个完整的一个测试。How many question total for the test? Um, I think it's ninety three. Ninety three. 那么通过九十三道题目的这样的测试，可以最大化的帮助学生找到他的这种优势，找到他的这种性格特点，以及适合他的这种职业方向。那么这个其实也是能够帮助学生来去确定这个大学这个专业的选择的。那么也就是说，经常我们说到的这个比较 hot 的专业，比较。呃，能够保证你找到工作的专业，其实并不一定是最适合孩子的专业。我们都知道，这个只要孩子有兴趣，这种内在的这种力量就会被触发起来。那么，在接下来的这个学习过程当中呢，他可以非常好的去享受大学四年。呃，那么，所以我们觉得，就是每一个学生其实都应该某种程度上去做一个这样的测试。Okay, by the way, so um, how many students so far you have been tested? Um. Hundred. I mean, not all of my students need it, so it's really just the ones that are confused or if they want to change careers. 
um, then they I would recommend that they take it. But not everyone needs to take oh, it. Oh yeah. Okay. So it's like most of the students they know, or yeah. some of the students they already know what they mm -hmm. want, right? Yeah. Or the parents already, you know, designed their path for them. Mm -hmm. So only if you have no idea or you are not really clear yeah. or you want to change your career mm -hmm. and you will see like if you can find out the strengths, yeah. right? Okay, cool. Um 其实就是说职业测试呢并不是每一个学生都需要那么通常来讲的话有一部分孩子属于 self-motivated 那么这些孩子呢非常知道自己想要什么那么也就是说在他的这个选择过程中就比较容易那么我们在上一期的公开课当中呢我提到过比如说一个孩子想学习computer science 那么接下来的话他就会在整个的四个summer进行一个非常好的 planning 然后呢把自己的这个活动啊包括选课呀那么就是为这个就是走向这个computer science这个方向来去做一个很好的一个设计。那么如果你的孩子现在什么都喜欢, they like everything yeah. with like very well-rounded, okay? 我们知道有很多这种well-rounded的学生啊,他什么都喜欢,各种科目都很好,甚至他们的文科理科都很平衡。这种情况之下的话呢,就建议他做一下这种career design或者是career consulting,然后通过career consulting的方式,然后来确定他们的职业方向。其实这也是一种我们认为非常好的方式。all right, so could you please introduce a little bit more like how it works? Usually when you uh, do the career consulting with the students mm -hmm. and what is the flow? Um, so first they would take the assessment and then we talk about the results um, to really think about their personality. Um, and from there, the results will give some recommendations on different types of careers. So we'll talk about the different types that has been recommended and then go into detail about like what that career really is um, and then type, talk about ways to learn more about those specific careers. And then based off of like what we talk about, the students will kind of narrow down what it is that they feel would fit them the most. And then we're gonna just do more specific exploration based off of um, as they narrow it down a little bit more. Okay, and may I ask like what career or what major is like most popular from the students' research after you finish the test with them? Um, I think most of the students, it varies in terms of all sorts. So, um, I mean, lots of them still end up doing social science or STEM, um, but it's more, it helps them figure out like what their strengths are and how, um, whether that's really the interest that they have. So in some cases it just confirms that this is what they really like. I see. Um, and helps them kind of think about how it works and then it also will help them think about um, how they can work in groups so the if they understand themselves more then they also understand like how they can study better um, and then work in groups better and stuff like that okay so based on the test that mm -hmm. we mentioned there's like all kinds of tests right yeah there's, there's like a tests. lot okay mm -hmm. so most the popular one is the characteristic or we call it a personality test yes yeah, so and there's be... another one is called like major test right um well the most popular would be um, the Myers-Briggs, which is their personality one. So that one will, there's different types of reports. So depending on what the students need, we would look at the, um, the report based off of their personality. And also you have to analyze the report mm -hmm. yes. and to tell them, uh, let them understand them better, right? Uh,就是这个呢,属于性格测试的一个最权威的一种测试。那么这种测试完了之后呢,我们会有一个非常详细的一个report。那么Emily呢,会去分析这个report,然后告诉学生他的性格方,性格特点以及他的喜好方向是
这个 summer camp 是有竞争力的。那么这个我在上周五的时候已经给大家介绍过。如果你没有听上周五的讲座的话，你可以等一下联系我们，我可以发你这个上一次课的一个 recording 啊，可以给你发一下这个哪些的这个我们的这个 summer camp 是比较 competitive 的。同时呢，你还可以在我们的网站上，我们有一个 resource 的一个 section， 那个里边呢，我们会把整个暑假的一些比较 competitive 的 summer camp 做了一个简单的一个总结和介绍，大家可以找。一下，呃，这个是我们两个方式可以支持大家回复一下这个问题。那么另外一个呢，就是说，如果你的孩子在这个暑假没有做任何的 summer camp 的这样的一个 design 或者是一个一个设计或者一个申请，那么你依旧可以通过你的这个职我们的这个职业测试，就是 Emily 的这个职业测试，然后来找到他的兴趣点和性格特点，我们就叫做 personalized project。那么这个 personal project 来讲的话，我们认为这种个人的这种计划。或者这种啊，一个小的一个工程，一个 project， 可以很好的去反映出孩子的兴趣和 passion， 也能够非常好的去促进他的大学申请。某种意义上说，这个比去参加一个啊非常 common 的一个 summer camp 更有竞争力。OK， all right， so would you、uh, like to share one story that you、uh, had the， you know， the test with the students， and after test， the student find out what's going on with himself？ Um. I think with one of my students, she took the test.、Um, she was an international student, so it just helped her figure out what her personality was. What、um, she what she was like before before the test. I mean, she was always she's very a confident person, but it's just I think once you take it, it helps you confirm who you are and put into words how to describe yourself, right? Because sometimes you know who you are, but you don't know how to describe、um, who you,、um, yourself. And so when she looked at the results, it Uh, gave her certain recommendations, and some of the recommendations、um, isn't necessarily obvious in terms of like she would actually do that. But if she thinks about、um, why they were recommending the job or the occupation, so、um, like they recommended that she look into something that was、um, like firefighting. So it's oh she yeah so、oh, okay, <laughs>、um, but it's not because they want her to be a firefighter, but the fact that as a firefighter. You like to be very active, and you like to、um, like handle what's it called emergency emergencies,、issue? and like so like you deal with fast pace, right? Yeah. So because she's really interested and in, she's really good at that, so that's why I recommended、um, firefighting. But so we thought、uh, she had to think about why they recommended that, and then she has she thought about different careers that. Would let her find a situation where it's fast paced, where she's always solving problems. Oh, working、so, in the emergency center. Yeah. Or well, a doctor. Well, she's a consultant. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So she works for a consulting company, and that's where, like, they're fixing problems, right? Okay. So, like, firefighting, you're putting out fires, basically, but in consulting, you're fixing. It's、problems. like you're problem solving.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, that's 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 very successful story. Okay, um, 那么就是通过这样的一种测试的话呢，刚才 Emily 也分析了一下，分享了一下，就是一个学生在之前，他其实对自己想要学什么专业并不是并不清楚。那么通过了这个性格职业测试之后呢，他发现自己呢特别适合，因为他这个建议是让他去做一个消防员。那么当时就笑了啊，因为这个女孩子做消防员是不可能的。但是同样的这种就是方向领域可以找到，就是他适合做的工作是。解决问题，并且去处理紧急发生事情的一种能力，有这方面的强处，他就可以呢，在这方面来去寻找一些更多的一些可能，就是可以去 explore 这方面啊、呃，这也是一个部分哈。OK， very good。啊， so 那么在场的这个加入我们公开课的家长呢，也可以问一些关于我们这方面的问题。那么今天我们的主题呢是 career consulting， 就是我们说的职业测试和专业测试。以及专业定向的这个问题，那么我们也先呃欢迎大家呢参与我们的现场讨论。那么如果你是在用 Zoom 的这个这个 account 的话呢，有一个 button 叫做 chat， 点击这个 chat box 之后呢，就可以把您的问题打进来，然后我们来可以做现场回答。这个问题 either 可以是问我，或者是啊问啊 Emily， 那我可以 translate 给 Emily 来去问，或者是您直接问英文就可以。呃、uh, ，那么我们也希望大家呢，在每周五的下午的五点半到六点。
都来到我们的这个 Zoom 的这个 Room 里边啊，这个 ID 是不变的。我们可以每周五的下午去回答一些大家的问题。那么还有一个问题是在上周问到我的，今天有有私信我了一遍，就是问到就是说孩子现在应该从什么时候开始去准备 SAT？ 呃，这点的话，其实我们上次已经提到过了。Sorry, I have to. Keep answer some questions based on the SAT. 就是如果你的学生，你的孩子现在是在这个九年级以下，那么其实他最好的方式是去 work on essay 和 reading 这两个部分是需要 long time 去提高的，就这个比较难提高。那么具体的方法怎么去提高 reading 和 essay？ 那么我们会在之前有讲过，我们之后还会有讲过。那么最重要的一点就是，如果去备考 SAT， 一定要先把 essay 准准备起来，因为 SAT 的每次去考的时候。虽然 essay 是 option 的，但是你的客观题和 essay 是要就是是要同时去考。如果你第一次考的 essay 非常的好，那么客观题没有考特别好，你第二次可以只考客观题，不用考 essay。那么相反，如果你第一次考的客观题考好了 ，essay 考砸了，第二次你想重考的话，你必须客观题再重新考一遍 ，essay 还要再考。OK， 那么这点就是有一个学生啊，这是我的一个学生，他第一次考试 SAT 考了一千五百九。非常棒，满分一千六，但是 essay 考得非常的低，十三分。OK， 那这个时候他要再考第二次的话，就非常的就是有 risk， 因为他不一定能够客观题再考到一千五百九了，但是他必须 essay 要重考。OK， 那么相反，如果一个学生第一次 SAT 考了一千五或者一千四百多，但是 essay 考了二十分或者二十一分，考得非常好，那么第二次的话，你就不需要再考 essay 了，只需要准备这个客观题的部分就可以。所以说，鉴于这种方式的话，我们先建议大家就是先把 essay 准备起来。那么同时，这个 essay 写作会是你今后 benefit 很久的一个事情，包括你的大学。啊，这个是我就回答这个问题哈。好，如果有什么问题的话，家人可以就是 either 可以举手，或者是通过 unmute 的方式来提问，或者是打字到我们的 chat box 里边。也欢迎大家打电话到我们的 office， 我们的电话是四零八二一六九一零九。OK， so。In between, when we are、uh, waiting for the questions, I also want、uh, to ask you questions、mm -hmm. about the career consulting.、Uh, when the students or the parents come to you,、mm -hmm. uh, ask about a major,、uh, what is the biggest concern they usually have? In terms of、um, the major, the、uh, career. Well, usually the biggest concern is finding a job with your major, right? So most students try to find jobs that help them. Toward a particular career path,、mm -hmm. um, but in some cases, if they want to, like, say, become a doctor, there's no one specific major that they need to do.、Mm -hmm. So it's more finding the major that's best fit for them that、mm -hmm. they're going to do most well in, and、mm -hmm. then they're going to be more successful in terms of getting into medical school,、okay. rather than picking a major that they think、mm -hmm. is more impressive and then not doing as well in it. I see.、Um, because right now here we're in the Silicon Valley,、yeah. so what usually the students come to me is like they want to study either computer science or something related to the technology. Yeah. Yeah. So we find like a lot of students they feel like or the parents they feel like that's the way.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so computer science becomes so popular that before we know the UC, right?、Mm -hmm. The UC. Uh, they are just offered the computer science is like kind of like very hot right now,、yeah. and it end up like the applicants for the UC is more than Harvard,、mm -hmm. right? So that's very crazy. Yeah. So according to like the work experience that you、uh, you were in US UCLA,、mm -hmm. so usually what do you think、uh, like for the computer science or the major major wise, what is the most popular major? Is that really about computer science? Is there anything else like? The、students like it, or they, you know, they want to apply. I mean, I think at UCLA, they're the most com outside of the computer science. The most popular major is actually、um, biology, and then political science and econ. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's not most. Yeah, not that many students major in computer science. Okay. All right. Cool. So, 其实 Emily 给我们推荐了一些别的专业啊，就是像 UCLA 比较火的专业，除了 computer science 之外，还有这个经济学，还有 political science 政治学，啊、呃，还有 biology。OK， 那么这些也是非常非常火的一个专业。呃，其实呢，还有一点就是说，在做这个专业选择之中呢，我们也推荐大家把选校和选专业可以结合在一起去。Right. Do you, do you suggest like the people when they do、uh, college vacation, they should combine 
uh, the major with the schools together, or they should just only using one major to apply all the schools? Um, well, I think it depends on whether they're, how good the major is at that particular school and how competitive it is for that school. For some schools, the certain majors are more competitive than others, but in other schools, it doesn't matter what major you are, um, you can pick anything. I see. So basically you want to be like, you know, combination, right? So we also recommend everyone to try to put our specific choices and needs together. Don't just say, for example, if you want to apply for a computer science degree, then all the schools will apply for computer science. Actually, you can have two options. There is a more general degree and a more specific degree. I'll call you a call. Okay, hello? 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 Yes, you are now. Okay. What is your question? Okay. Okay, sure. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So you can just keep in line. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so we were talking about uh, career consulting and career design and the characteristic test and personality test. Yeah. And then we asked the question from whatever you answer, uh, for whatever the students or parents ask. Okay, uh, 有没有大家有任何的就是问题可以同时问我和这个 Dr. Emily 的? Uh,那么是关于职业方向和专业。刚才我总结一下我们提到的问题，我们讲到了UCLA最火的专业除了Computer uh, Science之外，还有Biology，还有Public Science，还有这个Econ，就这样一些专业。那么同时在申请的过程中呢，这个专业的定向非常非常的重要。那么同时也不一定只为申请一个专业，然后来去结合无数的学校，你也可以在。比如说三个学校你申请是这个专业，那另外几个学校申请另外一个专业。那么一般我们建议是有两个方向会让学生会比较的有一个选择。那么当然，如果这个孩子非常的明确、清晰的知道自己要什么，就要去哪里。那么当
你希望把孩子推得很高或者推得很这个很。很很 top 的这种学校的过程中，你还要去考虑他是否能够在这里边进行一个啊，这个顺利的完成这个学业，因为我们都知道这个宽进严出的道理啊。另外也要知道他是否能在大学里边不会被就是折磨或者是压力很大。好，那么下面就是问这个测评主要是性格测试吗？呃，这个不光是性格测试，还有就是专业测试，取决于年龄。通常我们建议十四岁以上开始，就是最小的不要低于十四岁。那么我们在现在的学生当中呢，是每年测试一次，因为我们认为这个 teenager 这个 they change every year， right？、Yeah. 所以说我们建议是每年一次。啊、uh, ， what about the kids like under fourteen years old？ Um， I think in terms of under fourteen， we spend more time just talking about interests， so hobbies。And then exploring that, and then hopefully、um, that will lead to something more more specific when they get to high school. Okay. Ah,、uh, 那么对于比较低一年级的学生或者是低龄的孩子的话，一般我们不会这么早去做这个专业的测试，我们更多是兴趣和性格的测试。那么这个也能帮助家长更好的了解孩子。虽然说到这儿了，我觉得可能会有点搞笑啊，但家长会觉得我自己生的孩子，我不了解他的性格嘛。其实因为我也是当妈哈，我也是两个孩子，有的时候不了解。OK， 我不知道各位家长是什么感觉的哈，我是感觉。我自己的孩子，我也有的时候觉得不了解，啊，所以说这个测试我觉得还是蛮有意思的。那么现在我们带的最小的学生其实是三年级的规划，就是从三年级级规划大学。那么这个题听起来比较的 crazy 啊 ，This is Bay Area， OK？ Bay Area 的家长的这个 get ready 是从三年级开始， OK？ 好，三年级开始的话，我们要去根据他的性格，根据他的整个的一个兴趣爱好，去为他去。定做或者是建议他的这样的一个社会活动或者是一些 activity 的这个这个 plan， 比如说什么样的体育活动适合，什么样的这个这个音乐或者是绘画等等这样一个方式去适合。那么这这两下的话，我们也认为是比较有有帮助的部分哈。所以说是的，十四岁以下还不太适合做 MBTI 测试，因为第一 ，I don't think they understand it。In a proper way, they may not understand some of the questions. Ah, so second, is that they have a certain distance from the more specialized test. They may not be accurate. So we recommend that from 14 years old, we will have different tests. Okay, so next is about the test scores. 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 啊，你不用去写出学生的名字，你只要告诉一个比较 general 的一个 information 就可以。好，现在现在问的问题是 ，How do you charge for the test? Three lessons. Okay. How much time is needed for the test? How long are the lessons? Uh, so can you introduce a little bit more, like how much time is needed for the test? Uh, so the test is about ninety three questions. So it usually takes about thirty to forty minutes for the students to complete it. Okay. Yeah. And everybody finish in the same time, or someone take longer? Uh, some take longer, but it's timed, so they can't take too long. Oh, you don't want them to like think about yeah, it, right? Yeah. So that each question, they only have a couple seconds to answer it. Okay. Yeah. 啊、uh, ，每一道题呢，只会给你几秒钟的时间去回答，并不是希望你能够花时间去想。所以说，整个的时间下来是三十到四十分钟左右。那么我们之后的这个 session 的话呢，是 three session together. Each session is take one hour. Okay. And for the price, you can call the office to find out more detail. Okay. Ah,、uh, 希望这个问题也能回答 Okay. So phone number is four one ah four zero eight six two seven nine four zero three. Or you can log in the website for more ah、uh, like information. Yeah, more detailed information. All right. So ah,、uh, we only have one more question to answer. If you have a question, you can just answer. Um, if there's no, I would like to ah、uh, keep in touch with you guys. 啊、uh, ，电话再说一次是四零八二幺六九幺零九，四零八二幺六九幺零九。啊，我们的这个 website 是 www. dot seven edu. dot org。OK， 我们可以希望这个工作人员也可以在我们的 chat box 里边留下我们的电话号码和我们的网站以及我们的邮箱信息。呃、uh, ，那么这这这周五的这个 question 呢，我们还有最后一个，有没有任何家长可以再去问一个电问一个问题，或者还有问题的话可以问我们。OK， 好。
那么现在的时间是六点钟了哈，我们的这个今天的 consulting 君老师的时间就到这里了。那么我希望呢，我们下周五的同一时间五点半再来参与这样的一个活动。那么今天呢，我们邀请到的 Dr. Emily 给我们介绍了我们的 career consulting 和 career design 的这样方式。那么我们再来总结一下 ，OK？ I will summarize whatever we said today. OK? So 首先呢，就是如果你的孩子对于自己的职业方向并不是特别明确。或者是这个孩子性格非常的开朗，喜欢所有的东西，甚至是你也不知道他将来会有什么样的一个方向。那么在 come to the grade eight, grade nine 的时候，就是八年级、九年级的时候，其实我们就说是一个很好的开始收网的时间。那么八年级以下，可能他还可以去尽情的 explore， 尽情的去 try， 尽情的去尝试各种各样的东西。那么在八年级开始的时候，就要进行收网。那么这个时候，你需要去 narrow down， 找到他的方向。那么，通过家长的长期观察，可以是一种方向，或者是问孩子喜欢什么。那么这里边就有一个 risk， 就是他可能今年告诉你他喜欢了什么，他明年就告诉你他不喜欢了，或者是他喜欢了别的东西。那么这种情况之下，我们都建议在你真正的进行孩子这种整个的一个规划之前，我们要给他做一个测试。这个测试呢？有性格测试，也有这个专业和职业的测试。通过这两种测试的话，他能够去找到自己的方向。那么这个测试呢，我们今天也在呃做了一个简单的介绍，一共是九十三道题。那么这是一个专业的 MBTI 测试。那么我们需要提前预约。那么之后的这个结果，我们会通过专业的分析，然后帮你和孩子一起找到自己的 strong point 和 weak point。那通过这样的方式，我们来可帮助孩子 narrow down， 就是到底学什么专业更适合他，什么样的一个学校选专业，什么样的一个职业道路更适合他。那么这也是我们希望通过这种测试，能够更强的、更专业的、更有力的去支持孩子，然后去选择自己的学校和专业和申请。OK， 好，那么今天我们的 consulting 君老师的时间就到这儿了，我们就下周五的。五点半同一时间，同一个 meeting ID， 我们下周再见。Thank you, Emily. Thank you. Okay, bye bye, everyone. Bye bye.